I was walking through the park the other day and I noticed a few people were outside working on their laptops. And I'm talking 2 p.m. on a Wednesday. Well, thanks to the pandemic, we know that home office is 100% possible with today's technology. But what about park office? Is that even a thing? It's probably not, but I found the whole idea rather intriguing. So today, we're giving it a go. Before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Monday.com. More on them later in this video. So a vital part of this experiment for me was making sure that all the technology that I brought to the park could be transported conveniently and in one load. Now I don't own a vehicle but I managed to fit all of my gear into this cart and honestly bringing it there was a walk in the park. For office furniture I used a fold out table and a camping chair. Not the most ergonomic setup but hey if you want that fresh air and vitamin D while you're working eh, you'll have to be willing to make some sacrifices. Now with this current setup I would only be able to work for about an hour to an hour and a half before my laptop's battery would run out of juice. But if I'm gonna do park office I want to be able to do it the whole day. A dying battery is a modern day evil and my iPad was already at 25%. Well that's where the Jackery Explorer 1000 comes into play. This power bank boasts 1002 watt hours of power with a running output of 1000 watts and up to 2000 in surge wattage. The Jackery 1000 does offer two AC power outlets, however I brought along my power tower, you know, just in case. So as you can see, once my laptop and iPad were plugged in, I was only drawing about 45 to 55 watts of power, which is no sweat for the Jackery. So I was back in action and could continue working. But one thing we need to keep in mind is that even the Jackery 1000 has a finite amount of energy it can offer, right? Well, it's a good thing I also brought with me two Jackery 100 watt solar panels, which can feed directly into the Jackery 1000. You simply fold these bad boys out like so, pull out these little legs, connect the cables up to this adapter, plug it into the Jackery 1000, and booyah! We now have 115 watts of green energy feeding back into the power bank. So now my office is being powered by the sun. Epic! Now while I was in the planning stages of this video, I was looking for the right power bank for this project. And after digging through a bunch of reviews, the Jackery stood out to me the most. But I'll be honest, this project was getting pretty darn expensive and there was no way I was going to be able to afford all this tech. So I hired my favourite storyboard artist to draw up this concept image of my idea. I then sent the concept in an email to Jackery, hoping it would convince the team to get behind my project and support me by sending some of their gear. Luckily for me, they loved the idea and sent me out these awesome products. And what I really respect is that they did this with no strings attached. They simply sent the gear out to me and said, have fun. Not all companies are willing to do that, so a massive thanks to the team at Jackery. You guys are awesome. Alright, so with my power issues resolved for my office, it was time to kickstart the workday. And what better way to do that than with some good old caffeine. So I brought along my little Nespresso coffee maker. I hooked her up, filled her up, popped in a cap, and a few moments later, I had myself a freshly made espresso. Now this little coffee maker chews up to 1200 watts of power, but it wasn't a problem for the Jackery, even with my laptop and tablet still plugged in. So now that I had my caffeine fixed for the morning, there was one other big issue I needed to address. Internet. Now I could have set up a Wi-Fi hotspot on my smartphone, which is not a terrible solution, but my phone's prepaid plan only gives me 3 gigabytes of data, and additional data is rather expensive. And well, who likes Vodafone? Well thankfully Elon Musk has been busy launching thousands of low earth orbit satellites into space, and as a result we have a thing called Starlink. An internet service provided by SpaceX designed to help solve the issue of slow or no internet access in rural and remote areas of the world. And also to provide internet for those of us who wish to work from the park, obviously. Now I'll be honest, I was a little worried about how long the Starlink would take to get set up and connected, but it literally took no longer than 5 minutes from the moment I opened the box. I plugged the Starlink dish into my power tower, opened the Starlink app, set my Wi-Fi name and password. Next thing you know, the dish was automatically locking on to a satellite, and boom, I was connected, just like that. With the Starlink connected to the Jackery, I was now drawing 90 to 105 watts of power. 
just under what I was getting in input from the solar panels, which was pretty cool. So now that I'm connected to the internet, now's the perfect time to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Monday.com WorkOS. I've been happily using Monday.com to organize my production workflow for about a year now. So when they reached out to me about doing a sponsorship, I couldn't say no. And what really excited me is that they offered me exclusive access to their new beta feature, Monday Work Docs, a revolutionary online doc tool built for collaborating, sharing ideas, and creating workflows. WorkDoc's real-time engine allows for over 100 people to collaborate together without overriding each other. But what makes WorkDoc's really special for me is how it's beautifully integrated with Monday.com's workflows. You can embed live objects right into your work documents, which will always stay updated. For example, check out this next project I'm working on. Spoiler alert, it's another AirTag video. Now, when writing my scripts for AirTag videos, I have to keep close tabs on where my AirTags have been traveling, right? Well, instead of me having to go back and forth constantly to check my AirTag's location history, I can simply add my AirTag tracking board right into my script document, making my life a whole lot easier. I love it. And that's just one example of how you can utilize this very intuitive tool. If you'd like to give Monday.com and WorkDocs a go, you can get yourself a free one month trial by clicking the link in the description below. With the Starlink up and running, naturally the first thing I had to do was a speed test. Now, Starlink claims to offer between 50 to 150 megabits in download speeds. However, as you can see from my speed tests, I was getting up to 260 megabits per second. That's faster than what I get on my internet at home. Pretty impressive. The only issue with Starlink is latency. My ping was at 40, so not the best for gaming, but man, for satellite internet, that's really impressive. And Starlink claims latency will only get better as they continue to launch more satellites into space. As for upload speeds, I was getting up to 26 megabits per second, which also beats what I was getting at home. I was able to stream YouTube at 4K and watch Netflix at full quality on two separate devices simultaneously without a hitch. Now, I have to confess, I actually shot this project twice. The first time I shot it, I wanted to do this talking in the park. And well, for the most part, it worked pretty well. Awesome, so I have my laptop here, which is connected to my mobile hotspot, but there were several issues. It was quite windy that day we were shooting, so the audio quality wasn't the best. Awesome, so I have my laptop here, my iPad. Awesome, so we have a bit of wind, but I've got my, <laughs> cut. And also we ran out of time at the end of the day, the sun started setting and I hadn't finished recording everything I needed to. Essentially poor production planning on my part. However, during that first shoot in the park, we did an interesting test to see how well the Starlink would handle a good old Zoom call. The only problem was I'm a one man team and didn't have anyone to Zoom call. But then I realized I have you guys. So I posted my personal Zoom link onto my YouTube feed to see what would happen. And well, it worked. It didn't take long before the meeting flooded with a bunch of curious internet folk. I didn't know what to say to them, so I just gave them a tour of our park office setup. The Starlink handled the Zoom call really well, and we were even lucky enough to connect with a subscriber who was also using Starlink for their home internet, which was really cool to see. Definitely the weirdest Zoom call I've ever had, but ultimately a fun little experiment. So after doing all these tests, it became pretty clear that having Starlink internet all to myself was just outright greedy. So I figured I may as well share my solar powered high speed internet with the public. Meanwhile, around the time we were shooting this for the second time, I was also in the process of testing the theft protection capabilities of the VanMoof S3, which is an e-bike. I had been leaving the bike outside and unlocked for a few nights to see if someone would try and steal it. Now, I just so happened to have left the bike in the park near our shooting location, and its battery was running low. So I decided to bring it over to my office and give her a charge. Once I had it plugged in, I was now drawing a total of 280 watts of power, but the jackery was still at 95%, so no problemo. I should also mention that halfway into the shoot, my main camera was running out of power, so we actually connected the camera we shot this on into the jackery. Not only that, but we also plugged in a little refrigerated cooler so we could celebrate at the end of this project with a nice cold German beer. Now that's what I call a productive day at the office. So I know this was a very extreme example of something I imagine very few people are currently doing or would consider doing, especially to this degree. But I thought this was a great way to showcase how one can get creative with today's technology. And after actually going through the process of shooting this video and using all this tech, it made me realize how powerful the setup could be in a variety of use cases. 
For example, perhaps you're organizing a music festival and you want to provide your glampers with high-speed internet. Well, I could see something like this being perfect for that. Or perhaps you're a production company and you're shooting in a remote location and you want to provide your cast and crew with high-speed internet. Well, this could also be a viable solution for that in the future. Why do I say in the future? Well, currently Starlink is kind of geofenced to what they refer to as a cell. In my case, I was using my Starlink about a kilometer away from my registered address with no issues. But I've seen videos from other Starlink users who have been able to use theirs from much further distances. Now, I didn't get a chance to test how far away I could take my Starlink from my registered address before it would stop working. So I'm really not sure how large the so-called cell is. However, I imagine anything within a 10 kilometer radius of your home should be doable. But for those of you who really need the freedom to be able to take your Starlink anywhere, fear not. Earlier this year, Elon Musk stated that Starlink eventually plans on removing these so-called cell restrictions later this year. Whether or not he can stick to that time frame remains to be seen. However, it's great to see that Starlink are thinking ahead and will eventually allow their users to use their Starlink wherever they like. If you find this technology as fascinating as I do, I stumbled across this really cool website which shows a live view of where Starlink satellites are situated in space. I did a screen recording of the website for an hour and a half so that I can make this time lapse. And this is what the satellites look like when moving in orbit. Pretty cool to see. If you want to check it out yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below. Lastly, I have to say I was extremely impressed with the products that Jackery sent me. We had shot in the park both times about seven to eight hours and on each occasion we left the park with still 80 to 90 percent battery left on the Jackery 1000 which is really impressive. I will be doing a more in-depth review of the Jackery products to touch on the pros and cons so stay tuned for that. And if you're interested in checking out their products I'll leave a link in the description below as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.